Start with you, Monica. Um, briefly, can you touch upon, uh, we'll get your partnership later, but uh, some of the highlights of what Netflix achieved in 2023 um, and what we can look forward to in 2024. Thank you, Naman. You've set us up to a very hard task, you know, after the session that just happened and clashing with lunch. But we'll do our best. Yes. Uh, I think um, the most important thing, actually, I would like to say about entertainment content is that we are at a very interesting juncture in our journey on streaming. It's still a very nascent sort of uh, industry. But I think it's very rapidly moving, it's evolving so fast, and people are adopting it at a very, very fast rate. So I think uh, our journey, as you all know, uh, we did have, uh, you know, a slightly uh, sort of, we, we had a big bang start, and then we had a bit of a slower run. But the last two years have actually, Naman, been very, very exciting. We've completely sort of turned around, uh, you know, our offering, what we are here to do. We've made it very clear, you know, to our audiences, to our members, that we are actually here to serve them the most diverse and the most high-quality slate that can be possible, uh, you know, in the country. And I think the last two years, 2022 and 2023, have been very uh, milestone years for us. So last year was terrific. We had so much audience love in terms of all the stories that we did. Many of you have, you know, watched, shared love directly, indirectly. We had the most amount of critical acclaim. We had 100 plus awards. And I think just overall the journey has been of sharing with the audiences in India that we are here to tell very locally authentic stories with very universal emotions. We are here to be very transparent as a service. We are the only service that shares data up front. We are here to back the most unique creative voices and some of the best filmmakers we've had and we are here to partner with the most amazing creators you know, who are now taking to streaming and bringing their powerhouse storytelling to the streaming space. So I think all in all, what Netflix stands for in India, I would like to say, is for people to discover the best stories, the freshest, newest stories, and at the consistency and quality that you will not find on any other service. And I think that's why we've had such massive growth in the last couple of years, and we've just revealed a you know, very exciting slate. Uh, I'm getting the words terrific, phenomenal, when is that coming, when is this coming? So I'm excited. And coming to you, uh, Akshay, we just heard uh, Rani talk about uh, YRF's uh, theatrical journey in the recent theatrical journey, shall we say. So uh, let's talk about the streaming journey. Uh, what took you so long to start uh, getting into the streaming business? Okay, so, uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, it didn't take us very long. What it, what it allowed us was time to focus on the content we want to create. We decided to enter streaming when we saw that, you know, it's a main, it's a huge part of our audience's daily lives. And that's when we decided that we should enter streaming. Uh, I'm glad we took the time we did because, you know, the Romantics as well as the Railwaymen both have been huge successes. The Railwaymen especially a global success for us. Uh, and so I would just imagine that it's worth spending time on content. You know, give your story the best shape that it needs and uh, do it when the time is right. And coming back to you, um, coming back to you, Monica, um, the last time we spoke, uh, we spoke about uh, Netflix India's streaming philosophy rather than streaming strategy. Uh, now, for the benefit of the audience, can you tell them what that is? Sorry? What is the streaming philosophy of Netflix India? You know, the streaming philosophy for us uh, is at the heart of everything that we do at Netflix, which is what, does, what makes Netflix work? 
not just in India, but any market, you, whether it's the US market, it's uh, you know, Spain, it's Korea, it's Japan, it's France, Germany, everywhere, I think the one thing which is very core to us is that we are all about storytelling, about creating something for everyone out there. So we are not a service that will create one title, one story, and expect everybody to like it. Everyone in this room is different. Uh, you know, everyone's wearing different colors, different styles, our moods are different, uh, you know, our choices are different, and I think that is at the heart of what we do as an entertainment company also. We do not like to template. We do not like to put everybody in a box and say, you will only get crime and you will only get that one show or that one drama that we are launching and you must see that. It's very important for us to say that Akshay likes this, he has his own Netflix, his feed will be different, my page will look different, Naman, yours will look different. Everyone should be able to find on Netflix that is going to entertain them and give them value for their time. So it's, you know, uh, I think the value for time is something which is very important to us and really coming to you, meeting you halfway, you know, and, and, and being available to show you what you like. For instance, last weekend, uh, I think uh, Indrani uh, Mukherjee as a doc released, and on the same day, we had a comedy legal series, and both have been appreciated so much. And we have big films like Salar and Dunkey and Animal and Guntur Karam. So anyone can find what they're looking for. So at the heart of the philosophy is to really value you as a member. Everybody is special for us and we will program for you and we will ensure that uh, you know you find. But that doesn't mean making niche programming. It doesn't mean. A lot of times people confuse that with niche programming. So when Akshay says like the romantics is something which is so unique as a journey of Indian cinema, and it will talk to all the fans here who you know, are uh, lovers of Indian cinema, and at the same time, it will find its people all over the world and tell them the stories of Indian cinema. So I think that's what our philosophy is, to give you what you're looking for. And um, similarly, uh, Akshay, I mean, there is, uh, especially in the theatrical business, there is no secret sauce, right? But uh, what is it that, uh, for the benefit of everyone here, what is it that YRF uh, looks for when commissioning something, whether it's a film or a series? Oh, okay, wouldn't be a secret sauce if I shared it here. But uh, on a serious note, actually, as an organization, uh, we don't punish failure. I think that is the secret sauce at YRF. So, uh, and to address the second part of your question, it's a creative business. You will go right, you will go wrong, but it's about the story. The North Star for us is the story. And we've been uh, telling stories now for the last five decades, and uh, we hope we'll be here telling stories much longer after that. Uh, but when it comes to what we decide on how to green light, it is pretty much based on what that story is. How does it appeal to us? YRF as a studio is a porous studio. So we have our ears to the ground. Uh, and we take great pride in that. And that's what's been able to help us get to this point. Is you have to be able to know what the audience wants to watch. Sometimes you can go wrong with that, of course. But more of, as long as you're going more right than more wrong, you're doing well in this business, in my opinion. And um, let's talk about, let's come to the partnership. Now, um, it's a two-part question. Let's start with, how did the partnership begin? I with the romantics. Yeah, the partnership began with uh, me chasing Akshay and saying, Akshay, what is going on? Why aren't we working together? But jokes apart, I think uh, somewhere, uh, you know, the DNA of YRF and the DNA of Netflix is the same. As companies, uh, you know, we are both lovers of stories uh, and of, um, you know, a lot of high quality work, fostering new talent, finding new voices, working with seasoned voices. So there was something which was so common amongst us 
and the ambition to experiment, to innovate, keep telling stories, and like Akshay rightly said, uh, you know, no fear of failure. That's also something that Netflix embraces so much, which is the reason why we are able to innovate so much and to back so many voices, because like YRF, uh, we do this world over, we, in, we don't have fear of failure. Uh, we say this to our creators, we say this to our execs, in my team when we have conversations. I'm not the person who's deciding everything that needs to be done. We have a team. This, like at Virif, uh, uh, you know, the way they plan stories, the way they look at the slate, what is the next idea. So I think some way we found a meeting of minds there, a common ambition. And um, uh, we decided that we will start with the romantics and we were already in conversation to really, you know, plan something which was multi-year, which was game-changing, which was iconic. That's how we came together. Like in my mind, I was very clear that when we're looking at a studio like YRF, it has to be a game-changing partnership. And I'm just so glad that, you know, we could find common ground and so excited railway men Sorry, I'm giving a long-winded answer, but I have to say this. Railway Men is singularly, you know, one of the most sort of powerful stories ever told coming from India. It has been tracking in the top 10 of 35 plus countries. When you say that a film has done 100 days in the theater versus when you say 100 straight days on streaming, I cannot even begin to tell you what that means. That means you have hundreds and thousands of choices on a service. You're not going into a theater with your popcorn and your uh, drink in hand. You're actually there with your remote uh, in hand. You can click anywhere and yet you're choosing to watch that story and making it trend for so long. So really phenomenal work by Team YRF there and I think it just talks to why we are together. Akshay? Uh, it's tough to add to that. Uh, she's kind of uh, encapsulated everything I would have wanted to say. But, uh, you know, we're big fans of Netflix and we have been since they launched. Uh, we've admired the content that they create world over. And I think that the scale that which Netflix operates at is just marvelous. So when what we've learned from working with them also has been uh, just about doing things at scale. And what we love about this partnership is that it's taken our content and our creators, while they've done really well domestically, it's also given us a wide global footprint. So like Monica mentioned that it's trending in over 35 countries. But the, the true, uh, you feel the success of content when you know people who don't speak your language and are watching content and appreciating it. Uh, for me, that is a huge definition of success. Uh, so that being just one of it. Uh, the other, of course, like she said, that you know, both companies are not afraid to fail. Uh, we want to be able to do disruptive content. And I'm glad that we have a partner that would support us in that endeavor. And we'll be able to do more in time to come. And uh, sticking with the romantics, uh, this um, and specifically for the Indian market, it exploded one myth. Now, everybody says that uh, the India is a youth-oriented market and uh, you have to give, give them content that is, you know, that appeals to that particular age group. Uh, but leaving aside the nostalgia older market, the romantics appeal to a broad spectrum of audiences, even though it was dealing with you know, mostly archival content. Why do you think it worked? Both of you. Uh, so, well, first, uh, okay, so India loves the movies, right? We, uh, it's a big part of our culture. It's a big part of our being. And uh, I, I think the romantics was a journey that every viewer went on. So everybody has a YRF story in their life. My parents had a YRF story from Yes G's times. I have a YRF story from Adi's times. Mm. So, uh, like me, there are other people who all have a YRF story. There is a song that played at your wedding, mm. which was from a YRF movie. 
uh, there was a time in your life that you went to watch a movie, which was a YRF movie, and you went with that certain someone, which you, you might be with or might not be with, but you still have fond memories of. Yeah. Uh, so I think because of that connect, and the connect that this company and the studio has had, it's a, it's a cultural connect with audiences. And I think that's what uh, excited people and drew people to watch the romantics. That's what made them love it more, uh, the sheer nostalgia. As for the youth, uh, the youth connected with it because, again, there was a story about their family or a movie that they have watched, so which was featured or talked about in that show. We all love Bolly, Bolly, the Indian film industry and we all love watching movies. Uh, and I think the romantics just encapsulated all of that. You know, we often tend to box entertainment, uh, you know, in frameworks of numbers and uh, everyone is very curious, uh, you know, to just give the next business plan and the next sub number and the, I think what we see time and time again, Naman, is that story is well told will just resonate. They will touch you, they will creep into your heart, whether you like it or not, whether you know which time or era it is of. And I think romantics did just that. People who, like the younger generation, and of course now, I don't know what to call young anymore, there's Gen Z, X, Alpha, M, I, I, I've lost track. A, maybe so. start with the beginning. <laughs> so, I think um, what it did for people who weren't from that time of that whole journey, you know, it created so much curiosity in them that what is this and what has been the journey? And also I think it came at a time when um, somewhere there was some disill disillusionment with Bollywood and uh, everyone was confused what kind of films are happening and suddenly this docu-series comes, this story comes, and it really takes you back and it makes you feel the nostalgia, you know, the love of the films, the moments you experience, the times you've cherished at weddings, family birthdays, conversations. And I think that is something which made everyone, and you know, this happened both when we did screenings here, there was not a dry eye in the theater. And the same thing happened when we did screenings in New York, uh, you know, at the screening that we did at Paris Theater. It is like you could see that th that same emotion which you saw here at the YRF Theater was the same that happened there. And that's the power of great stories, I feel. And, and that magic has to keep repeating. I think uh, also we must add that it was the debut of Mr. Aditya Chopra. Oh. And yes, uh, of that, of course, did attract a lot of eyeballs as well. Adi, that, so, uh, sorry, Adi, I'm saying, Akshay, that credit goes to me everywhere where I go. I had nothing to do with it, but they say, at least you made us, uh, uh, you know, uh, realize that there is an Aditya Chopra. Otherwise, we were not believing the myth. Yeah, but don't hold your breath. As Rani just said, you won't see him for the next 27 years. Yes. So, um, coming to scale, you know, um, you mentioned the reach of Netflix, and obviously Netflix it's, is known for its uh, global scale. And uh, specifically about you know the railway men, you know if you just look at the the railway station in the railway men, I mean that is scale. So as two giants of scale, what have you learned from each other during this process? So uh, I think what our vision and desire is to tell cinematic stories on streaming. So it, it could be films, it could be shows. Uh, the Railway Men, as per design, was designed as a big show. Uh, it had scale. We recreated that railway station. So we actually built the station to look like Bhopal did back in the day. Uh, and that's just one step towards the kind of scale that we want to show. Our visual effects were done out of a studio overseas. Uh, we have worked with Grammy winning uh, music. The music score was done by somebody who won a Grammy. Uh, we, so for YRF Entertainment, 
the desire and the vision is to be able to create scaled content. And there's no better partner than Netflix to do it with. They do it globally, they do it, you know, they have some of the biggest and the best shows in the world are on their service. Uh, I've personally enjoyed working with their marketing and comms teams. Uh, I have to give them credit on positioning. Uh, it's like how we would position a feature-length film, uh, a big film from the studio. And the passion and the hard work and the energy and the time that goes into doing that. I've seen Netflix do the same for every show of ours. Uh, be it the Romantics, be it the Railway Men. We got into the rooms months before it came out. We designed the marketing campaigns together. We worked on it. And we were able, and the, the result, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, you know, we were able to achieve the success that we did. And it's a lot to thanks to Netflix. Monica? Yeah. Because uh, specifically because The Railway Men was amongst the top three shows of Netflix worldwide, uh, not just uh, in South Asia. Yeah, uh, I think Railway Men, from the time we've like um, sort of. Uh, uh, been together on that journey. It, it has been, uh, it's a very special show. Uh, it's a very important subject, uh, you know, for us as a country, as a people. Uh, it was also the 40th anniversary uh, uh, of the tragedy on 2nd of December. I think it was very, very important for us as, as VIREF and as Netflix to really bring it out in the way that we had to. And we just knew that like it was so powerful and it was so moving and it was so important and urgent as a story. So I think what I, uh, I learn every day from the way uh, we work with YRF, their passion, uh, you know, and the detailing that they bring, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's like um, a, very, um, uh, a very large, um, uh, long legacy uh, media studio coming with, a very new kind of a company, which is, uh, you know, a streaming company where, uh, you know, there are um, newer ways of doing things, which we are constantly learning from all over the world. So I think what we do, what Akshay and I do, and what our teams do together, is to actually make sure that we have a very open mind to learning from each other. Because a partnership can only work brilliantly if you're willing to learn from each other, if you're willing to challenge each other, if you're willing to push each other, and you're willing to believe in each other. When you, when you, uh, uh, you know, say that, um, that this is something, if Akshay tells me that this is something I know, we've done it for these many years and it is going to work like this, it's my responsibility to listen. It's my responsibility to say, okay, I trust, and let's do this. The same way when I tell him that, you know, we do this all over the world, Akshay, we know how to do this, you know, and, and he says, okay, fine, we do it differently, but you know this better. And I feel that somewhere when you talk of scale, and all of us know that, and Akshay knows this, currently we are at 260 million uh, households all over the world. And if I were to just give you a very conservative estimate also, suppose we assume today that only two people, uh, you know, per household are watching Netflix. It is much more as we all know that, but I'm taking a conservative estimate. If it's only two people, it's beyond half a billion people across the world watching a story that comes. So it's our responsibility as Netflix to take the creative voices. It's our responsibility to YRF that, you know, when they bring their best content, their best ideas, that we as Netflix really give it wings to fly, to go to everyone across India and then become big in the home country and then travel globally. So I think that trust and that faith in each other, uh, and we have fun working together across our teams. So that's a great recipe for delivering success. So we're running out of time, but quickly, can you run us through the, uh, the, the uh, slate that has been announced, which is in partnership between YRF and Netflix? Uh, so uh, we just announced, in fact, uh, three of them last week. Uh, we have two films. The first is Maharaj, uh, which is a David Goliath story that's set in the 1800s. It marks the launch of uh, Junaid Khan, who is Amir Khan's son. 
Uh, we have Vijay 69, which is a quirky slice of life film with Anupam Kher. It's about a 69 year old man who is uh, participating, who wants to participate in a trial thon and the journey of him being able to achieve his dreams. Uh, we have a, a show which is actually genre bending. Uh, it's a fantasy thriller uh, and we're very, very excited about it. It uh, features uh, Vani Kapoor and uh, Vaibhav Rajput. Uh, all these three will come this year on streaming. Where of course, uh, we have another show that is under production, which we will talk about at the right time. Uh, there's some stuff in development. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that will come from this partnership, which we're very excited about. And uh, Monica, can you tell us anyth anything more about this partnership which has not been revealed already? Uh, there's no scoop to offer. Actually, we are very transparent. At every stage, we've really shared, uh, you know, what we are working on together and uh, what is to come. Uh, all I can just say is that you can, um, you know, expect the very best quality. Uh, with everything that we do together uh, because I think both of us have the responsibility as uh, entertainment brands to really be serving the audiences to deliver the best. Like, you know, we want to be challenged to do our best and we want to surprise and delight with the next idea. Like what you're not expecting will come your way and we hope that it'll uh, you know, have the impact with which, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, that we planned and we worked together on it. And uh, uh, I think also, um, like going forward as we move on, there'll be lots of other stuff also. Uh, Akshay is going to open his cards. I have nothing new to share. Okay, so then Akshay, let me put you on the spot. What can you tell us about the spy universe that we don't know already? Uh, let me see. Can I? Can I? Okay. So I'll share the worst kept secret in the industry, uh, which is Alia Bhatt is headlining a spy universe film, uh, and that's scheduled to start later this year. Uh, but, you know, talking about the spy universe, uh, we're actually just so thrilled and excited about having this IP in the studio. Uh, I think it's a financial and cultural juggernaut that it's become. And as one of the most prized IPs, we take a lot of pride in it. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to come on the spy universe. Uh, we're going to see more and more films getting unveiled. I'll of course not be able to share everything here but we will talk about it at the more opportune time. Uh, but for now, I can just say that uh, Alia Bhatt is headlining a Spy Universe film. Yeah. And Monica, I'm Thank going you. to put you on the spot as well. So, uh, since Akshay mentioned Alia Bhatt, Alia Bhatt also starred in uh, Heart of Stone, which is a Netflix film. And uh, Netflix also has um, you know, a very successful franchise in uh, Extraction, which also belongs to a separate spy universe. So, do we see any merger of the different spy universes down the line? <laughs> Naman, I don't know whether you, you're uh, sort of seeding ideas doing Inception, or you know something that I don't, but these are great ideas. Never say never to anything, but never reveal anything before it's well cooked, so. That's fine. I mean, you had the Russo brothers here, and obviously all of you met together. That's why I'm just putting two and two together. Well, I, I just announced such a big slate. Everyone's excited about it. Please be excited about what's coming. We are super excited about what's coming, but we want more. Every, everyone wants more all the time. I, I can promise you that both as YRF and Netflix, and as Netflix is a service, we will, um, I mean, um, we will keep bringing you the best, the most diverse, the most high quality, and at consistency and pace that no one in this market can give. I can promise you that. We've shown how it's done. We've had a, like a brilliant two years, and um, we've announced this late for this year, which is already rolling out. 
three of the amazing titles that are coming. We are deep into productions for next year, you know, all development and production for year after on so many, so many ideas. So just everything's sort of in the works. So we don't have time for audience questions, but the one question uh, that, uh, you know, most aspiring people wanting to get into the industry will want to ask both of you is how does someone pitch to Netflix and how does someone pitch to YRF? Okay, so uh, actually, if you want to pitch a story to us, which is uh, for a feature film, uh, we have a script development department and uh, there is, uh, I'm happy to share their information and you can reach out to them. Uh, they do receive a lot of pitches that they go through and it funnels up to us. But uh, as a studio, uh, we are creator first and we are looking, always looking at new ideas, new creators. The Railway Men was uh, created, directed by a first time filmmaker. Uh, you know, we've just uh, uh, announced an association where we've signed Mohit Suri to direct a film for us. Uh, and uh, that's a romantic film that we want to make. So uh, we want to develop this genre and we want to bring it back, in fact. I think what we've all forgotten is love stories. And uh, YRF would love to bring back love stories. So if you have a pitch for a romantic film, uh, I'm happy to share information and you can get in touch with us. Is there an email address uh, that you can share? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think we should DM it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> And, and Monica, how do, you, how do we pitch to Netflix? I think very quickly, um, we have a team. I have a team that's constantly looking at fresh ideas. Many people reach out to any one of us. Uh, I get a lot of direct pitches, which I share with my team. My team's, uh, uh, you know, uh, LinkedIn people are always reaching out. Um, uh, unfortunately, the numbers are, personal numbers are also floating around. So a lot of it comes through that also. But I would also suggest that it's very important for uh, first-time writers, creators to actually also reach producers. You know, please reach YRF, please reach other studios, producers. It's very, very important to come with your ideas with a team sometimes that can actually also help you flesh it out to a certain extent. You know, so I think both direct pitching is also okay, but I also encourage people to take that route because uh, it is a more uh, sort of deeper and formalized way of actually bringing your idea. Otherwise, sometimes we get so many pitches that there is only finite time for everyone. So, but we uh, welcome both ways. That's all we have time for. Uh, thank you, Akshay. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Naman. Thank you, Naman. Thank you.